the ramp response of first order system so the analysis is similar so we take the transfer function c of s by r of s is 1 by 1 plus st so in this case uh, your r of s is 1 by s square for unit ramp for simplicity purpose we can take a unit ramp which is 1 by s square so what will be the c of s your c of s is 1 divided by s square into 1 plus st and we can write this c of s as a by s plus b by s square plus c by 1 plus st then we can easily find out what are the a b c values then we will get a value is capital t and b value is minus 1 and c value is t square capital t square so therefore we can apply inverse laplace transform here and we can get what is the time domain expression that is c of t so what will be c of t capital t by s will be capital t minus we have 1 by s square which means small t plus so we have t square by 1 plus st so we can take common t here uh, so that uh, denominator you can take t common and numerator 1 t you can you can uh, cancel them the remaining will be t into e power minus t by t therefore the finally your c of t expression will be capital t minus small t plus capital t e power minus small t by capital t this is the a complete response of the system when unit ramp is given to it. now so out of this response we know that t e power minus t by t is a transient term and capital t minus small t is the uh, your steady state term so we have both steady state as well as the transient now this equation if you plot it how the plot would be so i have uh, c of t and i have the time so when you plot this first of all i'll plot the input my input is ramp so this is my input ramp so as input is increasing then your output also increase but the shape of the ramp input the shape of the output is going to be slightly exponential increase then after that we have again parallel to the ramp input now so from this it's very clear we have very small amount of uh, transient response and we have a large uh, your steady state response and again if you take the steady state error what will be the steady state error e of infinity is r of infinity minus c of infinity what is r of infinity we know what is r of t r of t is a small t okay because it is unit ramp what will be the r of infinity then t will be infinite so we need not take that r of infinity we can take it as uh, e of t as r of t minus c of t so what is e of, uh, we'll take r of t r of t is t minus what will be the c of t expression because when you take the c of t expression that will be you have capital t minus t plus t e power minus t by 2 so uh, we can uh, we can get that it has uh, we have we can cancel uh, small t small t then uh, if you find e of t it is a t plus t e power minus t by 2 uh, here if you apply uh, uh, limit t tends to infinity e of t then we'll get it as capital t alone the steady state error for ramp input is capital t which is a time constant of the system then how can uh, we can compare your input and output so look at this response input and this is my output so at some point of time if you look at some point of time so you have the difference between input and output the difference between input and output is capital t if the time constant is less then transient response is also very less and your output will be almost nearer to the input the steady state error will be very less So if you have more time constant and it takes very long time to take the steady state slowly it increases and we'll have a large gap between the input and output and at any steady state condition then input minus output will have a large gap which is the time constant of the system 
we can also find as i said e of infinity but at infinity your r of t is infinity a c of t is also infinity because we have the t term there so before reaching to infinity after the transient response then we can find out what will be the steady state error so that is also it's called steady state error so not that t a t is infinity is not the steady state error after the transient response any error is the steady state error because the error is constant for longer time so in that case if you analyze that will be the capital t uh, summarize these three responses what are the responses the first response is impulse second response is step third response is ramp so in the first response we will have only transient there is no steady state that is impulse response in the second step response we have both transient and steady state in ramp also we have steady state and transient but the transient is very very less the most of the response is confined to your uh, steady state therefore steady state initially we don't have and steady state response increased and steady state response is more increased in ramp but a transient we completely transient and some amount of the transient we have the transient is reducing so even if you take the parabolic input if we try to find the response so the transient part will be very very less then we will have only steady state part uh, hence we use the par parabolic input to find the steady state error or steady state analysis rather than the transient analysis depending upon zeta values we have different types of responses of second order system so zeta is a damping ratio depending upon the damping ratio value we will have different types of systems responses what are the responses we'll see first we'll take zeta is equal to 0 when zeta is 0 you we'll look at the characteristic equation it is actually s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is 0 so when you substitute zeta 0 then it results in s square plus omega n square is 0 so what are the two roots s1 comma s2 are plus or minus j omega n which means i have two poles or two roots on the imaginary axis then if you take explain here one pole is an imaginary positive side another pole is imagine negative side and its value is omega n and as well as omega n means system will have continuous oscillations with a frequency of omega n means system will be at a verge of instability system will be at marginally stable something like system will have continuous oscillations so when zeta zero so this kind of response we will get now we'll see that response now this is x axis time and this is t and what will be the steady state value let us say this this is your uh, unit step response and for unit step response the steady state value is 1 so this is the steady state value now if you increase the time at uh, the moment you apply the step input if you increase the time the response will have continuous oscillations as it's shown here we have continuous oscillations and those oscillations are sustained we have continuous and the magnitude of oscillations is not changing we have constant oscillations so this kind of response will get when zeta is zero and my poles are or roots are purely imaginary so it is called undamped response what do you mean by that so damped means a force against the oscillations damped means we have some opposition force to oscillations undamped means there is no opposition force to the oscillations hence oscillations can exist for longer time even if you take t is infinity still we have oscillations so this is what your undamped nature of the system when zeta is zero we'll take another case when zeta is slightly increased means that the zeta value is from 0 to 1 so when zeta is 0 to 1 look at the characteristic equation your q of s is s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is 0 what are the roots s1 comma s2 are 
minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega n into 1 minus zeta square under root. So uh, if you look at S1 and S2, both are having the real part and imaginary part. So whenever you are having a real part and imaginary part and these pole locations are called complex conjugates. So S1, S2 are the complex conjugates, real and as well as the imagine what will be the real part it is a zeta omega n minus zeta omega n both are in the left side and the location will be minus zeta omega n on the real axis imaginary omega n into uh, under root 1 minus zeta square now i can define another frequency which is called damped natural frequency we have one frequency omega n what is omega n undamped natural frequency that means when the system is at under undamped the frequency of oscillations is omega n now in this case we are taking another term frequency that is omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square so it is called omega d so omega d stands for damped natural frequency so undamped means there is no force against your oscillations so oscillations are continuous damper means yes there is some opposition force to oscillations therefore the oscillations are going to be die out after some time and what at what frequency the oscillations are going the oscillations are going with this frequency omega d therefore the locations of s1 comma s2 are minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega d now take these uh, two po two roots two poles and locate an s plane this is my s plane real and imaginary and uh, this length I can take zeta omega n and this length is omega d therefore there exists a one complex pole and another complex pole we know that the complex poles are always in pair complex conjugates are always in pair even imaginary also we have always in pair so one pole here another pole here the kind of the response we get with these poles uh, for any step input is called under damped response so it is under damped response means the enough damping is not there still lack of damping so that is the reason why we have oscillations exist but fortunately those oscillations are going to die out after certain amount of time that is in transient period oscillations are there in steady state period oscillations are died out now so under damped response is like this next is we will take zeta is 1 so when zeta is 1 it is called critically damped system so critically damped means we have enough damping available zeta is 1 again we can write the Katsky equation a square plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n square zeta is 1 therefore s square plus 2 omega n s plus omega n square is 0 so this we can simpl simplify it as s plus omega n whole square is equal to 0 means there are two poles two real poles in the left of the s plane s1 comma s2 is minus omega n again minus omega n so there are two poles which are existing on the negative real axis and the location of the poles i can say two poles are two roots of the Karatsky equation are equal and as well as the real real and equal but they are in the left of the s plane now since the damping is enough there are no oscillations at all when you look at the response the response will be directly rises like a first order response it goes to the steady state value in this case steady state value is one so your critically damped response is almost similar to your first order response critically damped means enough damping is available to the system now root locations also we said next over damped system so over damped system will have zeta is greater than one it is greater than one it can be any value from one so it can be taken as one to infinity say so greater than one zeta value will call it as a over damped what do you mean by over damped you have taken more care about the damping in a system 
so when you take more care then we call excess damping is available when excess damping is available basically damping is our damped means we have opposition to the oscillations so we are taking more care about the oscillation the system will not uh, allow to this a damping factor will not allow you to reach the steady state value slowly it increases it takes longer time to reach so such kind of systems are sluggish in nature if you take more care about the damping they are sluggish systems then if you look at again characteristic equation s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is zero then the roots will be s come s s1 comma s2 is equal to minus zeta omega n plus r minus omega n into under root of zeta square minus one that means both the poles are real only but they are not equal they are unequal so the roots are uh, real and unequal and you can look at in s plane i have one pole here and another pole here one pole is going nearer to the uh, origin or imaginary axis another pole is going towards the minus infinity so out of these two poles now which pole is responsible for the sluggish nature we know already in s plane if the pole is moving away from the origin then your system will have faster response then the pole is moving towards the uh, imaginary axis or towards the origin then that pole will have very high time constant then that is the responsible for sluggish nature of the system so even if a pole here and a pole there then uh, the pole which is near to the imaginary axis or origin will have more dominant than the pole which is going away from the imaginary so the pole here at minus infinity will have very less effect i can call it as an insignificant pole the pole which is nearer which is going nearer to the imaginary which is called dominant pole so out of these two poles the pole which is there is responsible for sluggish nature of my over damped system